Hi, I'm Chanel, one of the journalists at Manx Radio. Welcome to the latest edition of Manx Radio Newscast. My name Pamela Shimwell Mayo, and I'm a chairman of the Isle of Man Parkinson's Disease Society. I was responsible for the forming of the charity in 1989. And the reason that happened, because my husband, Derek Shimwell, who was well known on the island, had developed Parkinson's disease. And uh, it was, we hadn't noticed it as a family, but I, at the time, was putting on a big charity event at the Palace Hotel in Douglas. And it was to raise money for Ramsey Cottage Hospital, who'd looked after me when I'd been in a bomb blast in Northern Ireland. And uh, I was in there for about three months and then allowed home. And uh, at this event at the Palace Hotel, I was perfectly fine. And um, the next day, Dr. Bob Lamming, who was a senior, senior consultant in, in the island, said he'd like to talk to me and say thank you for all the money I'd raised at that point. It was about 15000 the night, which was a lot of money then. And he said we and Dr. Richard Ham, who were both at the table with my husband for the dinner, they'd noticed something, just a little shaking of the hand or maybe dropping some food or difficulty cutting the food. And uh, I have to say, I hadn't noticed it at that point. And he said, we'd like to have a meeting with him and you there and just see if he has Parkinson's disease. So as he was away in Belfast that week on business, I met him at the airport and told a white lie saying I was going to see Dr. Bob Lamming because he wanted to examine me my spine Um, and then when we were there Dr. Lamming said to Derek Derek will you put your hands out in front of you and he took them and then he turned them over and he said I think you could be in the early stages of Parkinson's disease and that was the beginning of us learning to live with Parkinson's And it was amazing, very, very slow. He went on driving for quite a while until the day, and I remember this, that he rang me from Douglas. He'd gone round the roundabout by the sea terminal the wrong way and he'd been stopped. So after that, we decided it was better for him to stop. And one day, out of the blue, And this is after he'd had Parkinson's disease for over 30 years by then. We had two little children at the beginning, about five and eight when he was diagnosed. And um, I got a call from the medical group in Ramsey. They had a group practice there in those days. And uh, the doctor, who I knew very well, I won't give his name now, He said, Pamela, we've had a meeting, all of us in Ramsey, and we wondered if you could start a charity to help people with Parkinson's disease. And I said, why me? I've never done anything like that before. And the answer was, you have looked after Derek for over 30 years now with Parkinson's disease, which is a long time. And... We only hand out the drugs, he said. You know more about living with it, the different stages, than any of us do. So I said, I will try. So I rented a church hall for an afternoon in Douglas, put it out in the courier, and about 20 people came with Parkinson's, and we had tea and cakes, and that was the beginning of the society, and it's grown And I'm amazed how many people on the island have Parkinson's. We can't get a definite figure, but we're told that it's between four to five hundred at least. 
Right. There's a lot of it on the Isle of Man. Right. Now, Parkinson's. What is Parkinson's? Well, it's obviously something that affects the brain and the movement. But when people are diagnosed, obviously they think the worst. And when I get a call, when somebody is very worried, they might ring in the evening, I've just been told I've got Parkinson's, I always say to them, try and put that word behind you. Do everything you can while you can. I used to take my husband when we went with the children skiing, and obviously he couldn't, but we'd sit in the snow and have coffee and just do everything, have holidays, as long as you can, because you haven't been told that you've got a fatal disease. It's not cancer, it's not heart failure. Parkinson's is not like that. It comes in its own way, slow way, and it is difficult to diagnose, even for consultants. And over the years, I have learned this. And when I'm asked, I say, sometimes, well, have you seen the consultant in the Isle of Man? And we have a very good neurologist, Dr. John Thomas, but he's also neurologist of all things connected with the brain. And even he will say sometimes, I'd like you to go across to see a specialist at Walton Hospital or someone. And I think that's the best thing <clears throat> when you know you have or think you've got real Parkinson's, you need a good diagnosis. But then as a society, we, we have built it up over the years, and we have a wonderful Parkinson's nurse now. We had one, oh, starting in 1993, I think it started, when uh, Mary, Ch Mary Baker was the head president of Parkinson's UK and she came to visit the Isle of Man and she said, Pamela, you must have a disease nurse specialist here. And we'd never heard of that. And she said, no, you need one now. You've grown and you need somebody who really specializes in it. So we interviewed quite a lot of people and we chose a very good nurse called Sue Lawley, who was with us for 20 years. She retired last year. And it was a great loss, I tell you, because people were ringing up, where's the nurse? And we hadn't got one, and Manx Care had just started. It was a difficult time, particularly for me, because I couldn't produce a, a nurse that specialised. And uh, anyway, we did some interviews at Nobles Hospital, and we chose someone who came from Morecambe, who's always worked with Parkinson's, and she's a great success. Everyone is so pleased. Only the other day, someone I know who has got very bad Parkinson's and uh, they have a lot of involuntary movement, um, they saw the nurse recently who decided to change her medication. And she's only been on it a week and it's made such a difference to her. But it's lovely to know we've got a really good Parkinson's disease nurse specialist who understands and also can decide which drugs are best for, for them. But certainly the doctors on the island, uh, um, they all know what to do. But sometimes it's that attention of someone who really specializes. It helps. April is Parkinson's Awareness Month. How, yes. Im how important is it to highlight things like this and raise more awareness and keep the conversation going? Well, it's very important. Um, we learnt it from Parkinson's UK, and I'm sure it has been probably on television this week and in newspapers in England because they have Parkinson's Awareness Month and the one special day. So we followed them a number of years ago and did have a, um, a table in all the shop rate, shop rights on the island. 
and we had leaflets we gave out and people would stop by whether they had it or not or whether they wanted to know if they had it and um, they would put money in boxes which was a great help and we also helped by telling people there was a society on the island that they could join or they could ring at any time and ask questions and that we were there to help them in any way we could. And unfortunately this year with all the ShopRite stores closing, we aren't able to turn to them. Maybe one day the, the company that's taken it over, Tesco, will understand and give us a table in all the stores. But at the moment, um, I've asked Secretary Sarah if she can do some research to see if there's a large company that's open to people visiting all the time, a good turnover. And I've named a couple of companies, but we haven't asked them yet. So we'll wait and see. But um, we're missing Parkinson's Awareness Week in the Isle of Man. So we thought the best thing to do was to put a broadcast to let people know even though we're not having the tables with information, doesn't mean to say the society's folded up. It's very much there. We've got leaflets if you want it. And um, a telephone call to either the secretary or myself, and we will try and help in any way we can. When you used to run the tables at the shop rights, mm. um, did you get quite a number of people querying or coming up and asking for advice? Yeah. We did. I was amazed. And they would come up and say, we didn't realize there was a society. Um, I think my husband's got it or my member of family or what do you, what is it like and what's available. Very much people stopped by and were very interested. It opened my eyes, actually, and the number of people who did. So people would also donate towards the charity. Mm. Um, are you now missing that funding? Is the charity now missing that funding? Well, obviously. And also, the occasion brought people to you that you didn't know before. And um, children would come up to the desk and loved getting a sweet or something we had there and uh, putting money in the box. But looking back over the years we've done it, which is about the last 20 years, um, I'm, I was amazed the people who stopped by and queried things and wanted to know more about it. You see, it's a very private illness and a lot of people know something's wrong with them but they don't really want to know or don't want anyone to know. And that's why they came up and queried it. So it was always very good and we'd have collection boxes that were all collected and put straight in the bank. And that is the point. Any, any money we raise for anything, over all the years since 1989, I have never charged the charity even for a postage stamp. And um, the rest of the committee are the same. Any donations we get, and yesterday, I have to say, out of the blue, a very nice donation was sent to the secretary. I haven't seen it, but I did a thank you letter last night to the company. It's obviously in memory of somebody connected in the Isle of Man. And it's really by that Awareness Week that other people get to know and think, oh, maybe we should support them. We're not begging for anything at all. We're there to help, but it's lovely if whatever we've done for someone is noticed and it helps. So you're appealing to get more of your presence out there? I think so, yes. Because I'll give you an instance. This morning I was at a meeting in, I think it's called Help Age in Ramsey, a shop where people can go. And I was just talking to the person who was managing it, and I told her I was coming to do this this afternoon for Parkinson's. And she said, oh, that little man that's just gone out, he's got Parkinson's, do you know him? And I said, no, 
I, I know you. I haven't seen him as a member. or So I readily opened the door and said, hello. I said who my name was. And I said, I believe you have Parkinson's disease. Um, did you know there's a charity for it to help? He said, no, he didn't know. So it's really to get that knowing out to people throughout the island. You're not alone. We're very private. We never mention any names. That's the most important thing because it is a private illness. And um, we every month we have a lunch somewhere on the island. We move around from Douglas to Port St. Mary. I think it's going to be Ramsey next time. And it gives people who want to, who belong to the society, or even if they don't, they come. And we have a lunch, whether it's a hotel like the Palace Hotel or it's the park in Ramsey. And we're looking always for venues where we can take about 40 or 50 people that are able to come. And that venue has to have car parking. That's the important thing. And also an ease of entrance to get people in because a lot of people with Parkinson's have to give up driving. But if they let us know they would like to come to a lunch, we organise transport for them and a car will collect them. And that gets people out of the homes. And one day, a few years ago, we were having a, a very nice fish and chip lunch at the Craigner Bar. And there was a lady sitting opposite to me and I noticed with her hands that were shaking, she was having difficulty with the food. And I looked at her and I said, Margaret, is there anything we can help more for you as a society? And she looked at me and she said, Pamela, you don't know what you do. She said, I look forward to that one day a month that I can go out and put a dress on and lipstick. And I shall never forget it. Bless her. She, she's passed away now. It's about 10 years ago. But I'll never forget those words that how important... It was for some people with it because they just feel, you know, they've got an embarrassment and uh, there's no embarrassment with it. And uh, we welcome them with open arms and they can come and join in the lunch. And in May, once a year, all of them come to my home with the lovely big gardens at Ballamore and we have chairs all along the ter terrace and tables. And um, hopefully, I pray hard, it'll be a sunny day. And they love it. And then we have the full-size billiard table in the hall covered with lovely food from salmon to all sorts of things. And they really have a lovely day. And one lady said to me last year, she said, I count the days of the year to where we're coming because she said it's so lovely to sit outside and be with people who have the same problem as I do. And so we help th those sort of people. Oh, perfect. What are some of the symptoms of Parkinson's? I understand you have symptoms and you can also have early symptoms. Mm. Well, the obvious symptom is a slight tremor in the hand or maybe one arm to start with, maybe a year before. And I never realized this at the time, because as I say, I never noticed my husband Derek's. Looking back, I, I'm surprised I didn't. But obviously it wasn't showing, and it comes so slowly, and it's only when the vibration of the body you know, gets worse that you realize and you think there's something wrong, I must go to a doctor. And... Um, on the whole, the majority of people don't all shake a lot. Some do, some don't. But some can get something which is called dyskinesia, which is a form of shaking for Parkinson's disease. And we have a few people like that. And it, for them, it is an embarrassment because they know they wobble, they could fall. And uh, it, it, that part is, is hard for them. But, as I say, medication's improving all the time. And uh, hopefully they'll get the right medication prescribed by whoever it is here that helps. I've just heard only today about someone who has what they call this tremor. 
And um, the nurse, who is very good, she saw the person and uh, suggested she went on other medication, which she has done, and it's made a tremendous difference to her. Anything else you want to add or say? Anything that we didn't mention? If anyone's worried and nervous or on their own, I would tell them to make contact with somebody in the society. Um, we wouldn't want to publicise who they are, but know that there is help out there to guide them. If it can't be done here, well, there's other things. And the other thing is, because we have a good contact with Parkinson's UK, which we were part of for years, it was only about 10 years ago, um, we were advised to start a company as well. Well, nowadays I don't think we need it, but at the time there was talk we did. And um, it made a big difference being part of Parkinson's UK. And then we realized we, we, didn't, we didn't need it, but we talked to them and only the other day I've got a big portfolio sent to me, which anyone can see if they contact me. And with the current um, details of all, this re all the research that Parkinson's is doing all over the world and what the newest things are. And I've been reading it through thoroughly. They haven't got a cure yet, but they're certainly getting near, I'm sure of it. America's doing a wonderful thing, Holland is doing, and Great Britain is, and certainly the Alaban. But um, there is that information if anyone would like to have a photocopy of the two or three pages of research that's come through from London of where they're up to now, and also to know that there is a major society in England as well, you see. I think my last question is, so research is improving day on day. It is. There's talk about a new pump, a stomach pump. Now, they haven't mentioned it in the research papers they've sent to me, but they're certainly looking seriously, I've heard, at it. And uh, we just have to wait and see and rely on it. I had hoped two years ago, we were left a donation here by someone, and in his wishes... He wanted that money to go to research, to find a cure. And I had a meeting with Dr. Thomas and the then nurse we had who was left at, the moment, left at Christmas. Um, but it never came together. They couldn't put it together researching it here. So last summer, I explained it to Parkinson's UK and said, if I send this money to you, the wishes are that it has to go to research. And they did it, and they're keeping now being informed every month how they're getting on. So it's good we're all working together. But I was amazed all the countries that are researching Parkinson's, and so far they don't seem to have come up with a real thing. But it will happen, I'm sure of it. Oh, perfect. It to... Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for making it to the end of the Little Manx Radio newscast. You are obviously someone with exquisite taste. May I politely suggest you might want to subscribe to this and a wide range of Manx Radio podcasts at your favourite podcast provider so our best bits will magically appear on your smartphone. Thank you. Thank you.